so this bug, um, basically every parks department and like environmentalist is saying to squash and kill it on site. Oh, wow. Because they are decimating a lot of native trees that we have here, including this black walnut tree. Um, you can see that the tree is like, it's done so. You know what I'm saying? This tree is about to die. Like, all the leaves are off. Um, they're coming from China. Invasive animals and plants do really well in New York that are from China because we have like a similar climate in ways, but we don't have the same predators that would naturally eat them. Um, I'm not going to tell anyone what to do. I actually have some sort of controversial thoughts on the lanternfly. And so, yeah, but they say you should squash it and kill it mm -hmm. um, because it's really, it's really doing some damage to a lot of our agricultural crops, yeah. including grapevines, peppers, um, and the black walnut, mm -hmm. including maple trees. Um, what else? Yeah. Probably English walnuts, too. Perhaps, yeah. I remember reading the black walnut. So yeah, there's a lot of lanternflies here. I'm collecting them for a girl that makes like art out of bugs. But yeah, what they say that you should do, it's gonna hop. It's so gonna these hop, things don't fly. Uh, yes, yeah. They hop. Look. Oh, they hop. So yeah, they say you should squash and kill these bugs. I'm here to tell y'all what to do. But that is the uh, that oh, is. What they say you you wanna, do you want to Do you want to? I have a, a jar, okay. thank you. Okay. Yeah. I, I read that the eggs came over on a pallet of stones from China. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so in 2014, they discovered the bug um, in Pennsylvania. Sorry, I just have a casual jar of dead lanternflies. Um, that's the type of party you came to. Oh, that's nice. I love it. So, yeah. Uh, this is my kind of thing. I'm going to make some art out of the lanternflies. Wait, here. you want me to spray you? It's sure, all why not, yeah, you know? Spray you. They came over in 2014 on a shipment of stones for, like, landscaping stones. Thank you so much. And um, basically, in the past, in the past, thank you so much. I'm good, thank you. I'm going to get bit regardless. This is so sweet. I can't right now. Thank you, thank you, Rose. So basically, they came over in 2014. They've really taken over. You're going to see them everywhere in the conference house. There's a lot of dead ones down by the beach. But the New York Times just wrote about the spotted lanternflies. So you can read about them. And um, yeah, that's really just about it. But let's talk about the black walnut. And maybe we can forge some because, you know, this tree ain't doing too well anyway. Um, the black walnut. There's a walnut inside of there. The husk of the black walnut is actually medicinal. Um, I know herbalists that make uh, an infused oil from the husk. The husk is the outside. So who has a walnut? I have a bunch here, actually. Do you want to do the honors of cutting it up? You have the knife. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, they say maybe you should wear gloves for this. Y'all know I'm here for the leg, you know what I'm saying? But here, let me just peel it up. So you can see the outside, the husk right here, it's very soft. This can be collected and harvested by you if you want to cut it open, if you want to step on it, if you want to um, take it home. This husk part can be infused into oil um, for a uh, topical antifungal. Mm. So if you're someone that deals with athlete's foot or different types of, you know, fungal infections or whatever. Are you talking might, about this part here? Yeah, the husk, so the outside. the outside. So for anyone who like doesn't know that nuts grow like this, and like a lot of our nuts, like walnuts and cashews that we buy in the store, they come from like these massive trees, almonds too. So that's why you hear some claims about tree nuts not being so sustainable because you literally need to raise an entire tree to maturity just to get the fruit of it. It's like insane. So that's why there's some concerns about the environmental, um, you know, impact of like almond milk and stuff like that. You really have to look at like dairy and make those comparisons, but just you know, for some background, you're an agricultural person, so maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Care to add anything? About dairy milk or? About, black? I don't know, almonds, tree nuts, sustainability. Uh, a lot of water required for almonds. Uh, I heard California's having trouble uh, recently with keeping things going, mm -hmm. but they do supply, I think it's like 70% of the world's almonds. Yep. Yeah. A yeah. lot of our produce comes from California. It's like a desert. They are like going through droughts all the time. And, you know, not saying stop drinking almond milk, but, you know, there are some questions about the sustainability of that. Oats is a little different, though. It's a grain, right? Oat milk, perhaps a more sustainable alternative for the vegan. This is not quite ready. This is 
you know, we're going to get to the wall next. So is it the, the black that is uh, more medicinal or is it the green or does it matter? So the green, the green husk can be made into, um, can be dried and infused into oil to make the antifungal topical. Oil, There's right. a really awesome herbalist. Her name is Dina Falcone. She's actually upstate New York and I love her. Dina if you hear this, take me on. Um, she has a great video on black walnut and like making it into an infused oil. I don't really make oils. Um, that's just up to you. This is edible. This is the edible nut. So what you, I've never eaten it actually myself. What I have done is when these turn black, you can make a black ink out of it. There's a local artist. His name, his name is Tat Fu Fan. And he makes um, ink out of black walnut um, when it turns black. And yeah. So there's a lot of uses for this tree. This is probably gonna die. People, um, you can make furniture, you can make bowls and all different types of stuff from the wood. That's outside of the realm of my expertise. But just to give you an example, like this is a native tree that is edible, medicinal, practical, and it's like right here. And so, you know, when we walk through our parks in Staten Island, we really have to remember like these are such great resources for all of these really practical things. Um, what do you think the parks department is going to do with this tree when it comes down? They're going to get rid of it, no? Yeah, it'll probably be like, I mean, I don't know, I don't work in this park specifically, but a forest there would probably come in, chop it, chop it down, and maybe put it like in oh, the woods no. somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I would hope. Not the garbage? I would hope. Let's hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Is there any mushrooms that would grow on it? Uh, perhaps. I don't know any specific mushrooms that like to grow on the black walnut. A lot of mushroom. So anyone that wants to get into mushroom foraging or is into mushroom foraging, you know, mushrooms have their trees that they like. So we'll look on oak trees if we want to find hen of the woods, which is a choice edible you're going to see popping up right now. Um, chicken of the woods. And we'll look for different types of trees for different types of mushrooms. I don't know anything about the black walnut and mushrooms, but this is why I told y'all to wear gloves if you want to do what I did. <laughs> this is going to be stained for three days. Yeah. You know, if you're my friend, you just know what the deal is, so it's fine. But if anyone wants to shake those down and try some stuff at home, please yeah, I, I have at it, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the outside, the outside. Yeah. There you go. Yes, but for anything yeah. with um, oh, thank uh, you. oil, infusing into oil, you thank want it to be so as much. less wet as possible. Because like, water and oil don't mix very well, and it might make your oil oh, okay, okay, okay. So if your oil is yeah. it'll smell you know, like crayons. Ironically, I don't know why. <laughs> Thanks. You want to dry it out before you infuse into an oil and probably watch the tutorial before you do it. When you do infuse oil, I've done, I've done them before. Okay, so you know. Okay, so there you go. What kind of oils do you make? Um, I made like, I use like lentil, like Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I took an herbalism class.